What is going on, Colts Nation? And welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Guys, we are very excited today as we welcome on a special guest to the podcast. He's quickly become a fan favorite of Colts Nation. Uh, we want to welcome on uh, 2017 Pro Bowler, 2017 Force Fumbles leader, and coming back for his second debut in the AFC South, this time on the right side of things, Mr. Yannick Ngakwe himself. Yannick, thanks for, so much for coming on, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much, Derek and Cody, for having me, man. I'm just, you know, ecstatic and just super happy to be a code and be, to be able to put that blue and white on and uh, be able to just make an uh, impact in the city. Oh, we're we're super happy that you're doing that for us as well. We mentioned first season as an Indianapolis Colt, but that didn't take long for you to jump right in interacting with fans on social media. You have made your presence known greatly on that. We have interacted with you several times on social media, as with a lot of other people, been asking for recommendations and a lot of other things that we'll talk about here in a little bit. But what's it been like so far getting familiarized with the state of Indiana and getting along with Colts Nation so far? Yeah, absolutely. You know, just being able to just receive that uh, user hospitality and everybody here is super, super nice and respectful. You know, even in the neighborhood that I live in, like people are super, super family oriented. And I love that. And, you know, just to continue to speak about outside of football, I just love the city. I love everything about it, the tradition. I love, uh, you know, the uh, the great uh, the great defensive ends that came before me, uh, like the White Freenies, the Robert Mathis and things of that nature. And also, you know, just uh, speaking about uh, my organization that I'm a part of now. I just love my head coach. I love everybody from the top down ownership. You know, everybody just has straight class. And um, I'm privileged to be able to be a part of this organization. Absolutely. We're obviously thrilled to have you as well. And Yannick, this this offseason, the Colts, the team did a little bit of an overhaul in some areas. You know, new defensive coaching staff who you're very familiar with and Gus Bradley. Uh, you know, some former high profile players, including uh, Stephon Gilmore and some other guys as well. Um, you know, even adding some some former players for the Indianapolis Colts, you know, as well into this locker room. So needless to say, a lot of accountability was added this offseason into this team. Uh, based off the interactions that you've had, obviously you being new to this team with some of the fresh faces that you've never played with, um, what's it been like for you? How do you feel like it'll help you guys going out? Because it is a, a long, grueling season with 17 games. You know, how do you think it'll help k- kind of keep the pressure on for you guys for the entire season to make sure that you guys don't overlook anybody and every single game you take one game at a time? Yeah, like you said, I feel like you hinted towards it already. I feel like Chris Ballard did a great, tremendous job to just bringing certain guys in to be able to mold and shape this defense the proper way. And another name that pops in my mind is Gus Bradley. He's a person, a mastermind and a guru of just drawing up, you know, uh, certain defenses to allow us to be successful. Um, based off the practices that I've been a part of and uh, being in these huddles, like I can see how, how hungry guys are to just be great. I can see already how we're gelling as a defensive line all the way to the back end, uh, back seven. So um, being able to uh, just witness that and uh, uh, take all the information in, it just allows me to be super comfortable when I take the field on, on Sunday with, with my guys. You know, these guys are prepared. Uh, DeForest, uh, when Shaq gets back, he's going to make a huge, huge impact. Um you know, and just shouting out guys on the offensive side of the ball. Matt Ryan is a true leader. Um, he implements it every single day. Um, I love the way that uh, my boy Q, Quentin Nelson, the way he practices. He practices with great intensity and it's contagious. So, you know, when you have a, a nucleus like that, it would allow us to be great and be able to, you know, be able to reach the playoffs and hopefully even further. Love to hear it. Yeah, as Cody mentioned, Last year, you played with Gus Bradley, so even though moving to a new team, again, it feels probably feels good to be a part of, you know, your uh, D.C. system once again. Uh, What is it about Gus's system that you believe utilizes you and your skill set so much better? Uh, You know, it's just been proven over the years. You had the uh, Legion of Boom. They ran a similar system to what we ran right now Uh, with Sherman, those guys, Earl Thomas, Michael Bennett. You know, those guys were super successful. Cliff Averill. And then you go back to the 27 uh, team defense of the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, we ran the same defense and you saw how successful we were. You know, when, when guys come together and buy into the scheme, this defense can be super, super deadly, super effective. And uh, last year with the Raiders, you know, um, the Raiders haven't saw that they didn't see the playoffs in a very long time. And I just feel like with Gus coming and implementing, you know, that defense, it allowed guys to be super free and to be able to fly to the ball. And we had a pretty, pretty good defense uh, last year when I was a Raider. So, um, 
I just I just uh, want to tell the fans like, you know, this year you'll see a, a different a different switch, you know, in the defensive side of the ball uh, in particular, and uh, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. We definitely look forward to seeing the, the kind of changes this year from uh, the, the Matt Eberflew system. Obviously, we wish him well in Chicago, but moving on to the Gus Bradley system, we're really excited for that. But I wanted to ask about you individually because you are a vet in this league now. You know, you played six, seven seasons in the NFL, and I'm sure you've learned a ton in that time. I'm curious, what have been some of the biggest things you've taken away from you know, your time in Jacksonville, your time with some of these other teams? And has it changed your approach at all? you know, say when you came into the league or your second or third year, has it changed kind of your approach in any way, the things you've learned? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I feel like I've learned a lot about just having uh, gratitude and just being uh, thankful and grateful and appreciative each and every day that you breathe, you know, on this earth. And um, learning uh, learning from like uh, since a rookie all the way to now, I've just learned about, you know, being a servant leader, uh, giving with no intent to receive. And uh, the blessings come back twofold when you do things like that. And then also, you know, just learning about uh, all, also, you know, continuing to pay it forward to the younger guys. So the younger guys won't trip up and make the, sim- the same mistakes that you made, you know, trying to learn and uh, weave through the process of, you know, being a professional athlete and continuing to play at a high level and having consistency. So with that being said, it's like I'm so I'm super thankful to be able to be uh, a part of the NFL. And it was part of my journey because. When I do hang up the cleats, whether it's 10 years from now, however long, you know, the Lord wants me to play this game, I have took, you know, certain uh, characteristics from it to be able to, you know, instill in myself as a man uh, moving forward. And like I said, just being grateful, uh, having patience and just uh, living in the moment. Awesome. I mean, like Cody said, being uh, this many years in the league, you've met a lot of players, a lot of coaches, a lot of people in different organizations. Who were some of the people or maybe still are some of the people that have helped you the most as a player and as the man you are now? Uh, you know, first of all, everything goes to God. Without him, I wouldn't be here. So God, uh, number one. But uh, I wouldn't even, even say particularly anybody like uh, in the NFL. I would say my mother. My mother uh, instilled a lot of great values in me. She's been my number one fan in my corner for a very long time. Uh, without her, you know, I don't even think I would be in the NFL. She was the person sacrificing, you know, taking me to football practices when I was a young kid and uh, watching me and being my support system and allowing me to be able to have the opportunity, you know, to play this game. So I would say uh, my mom has just been like the number one foundation for me. Love that. Love that. That's awesome. We'll always love some mom love here on the podcast. So appreciate you shouting her out. Um, but you'd mentioned you you hinted a little bit ago, Yannick, about you know this these guys that you've been able to build relationships with. You know the Quiddy Pays, Dio Adangbo, Taekwon Lewis, DeForest Buckner, all these different guys. Um, so now you come in as kind of the veteran of this defensive end room, a really young room. I'll add. Um, talk to me about kind of what you've seen from these guys. Now that you've had you know some time to be with them off the field, and then just recently with camp and stuff. You know, what have you seen from young guy, the young guys like the Quiddy Pays and the Dio Dangbos and those type of guys? I've just seen, you know, guys that want to learn, you know, guys that are coachable and guys that are like, you know, take super, super uh, notes, great notes every time we talk. You know, they always pick my brain, of, you know, what is, what's your, you know, pregame preparation? Uh, how do you, you know, perceive an offensive lineman's hand and how do you like break it down as far as doing your cross shot move, things like that? And then also, I just see a talented edge rusher coming out of Quiddy. Um, he's super talented. He's young. He's only 23 years old. He has so much room to grow and be special. And that's the reason why we brought him over here to, you know, be super, super effective. And Dio, he has a God-given, like, length in his arms to be able to be super special. And he has a great motor. So when he's able to put all those things together, he can be a, definitely a dangerous piece in our defense. Cool. Yannick, I want to go back to the social media thing. And I just want to say, like, I know you saw my tweet from earlier this week about how your attachment to this fan base already in just a short amount of time has, you know, for a lot of people, it's kind of in some weird way has actually touched a lot of people in a way that they feel like you've changed their lives in some way. We've actually had people come out and say that you've been relentlessly trying to just make sure that you stand out amongst these players and then some of the things you've been doing for the community. Uh, I know something that has gotten a lot of national attention over the last week has been 
your effort to help local teachers with getting supplies for their classrooms. That was a big initiative, and it's been talked about all over the national media. Talk to us a little bit about um, how that's going and like your approach to wanting to have that kind of presence on social media. Where does that come from? Absolutely. You know, um, coming from a background of, of, you know, domestic violence and, uh, you know, low income, you know, it just allows you to really think about things when you reach a certain platform. And uh, I've realized that, you know, over this past off season, I just said, you know, I had a heart to heart with myself and, you know, had to really like think about all the things I was grateful for and think about people that are coming from similar situations as myself. And a lot of the, you know, uh, teachers that were in my life, uh, specific grades, you know, were huge impacts and influential uh, in me becoming a man. And those, like I said earlier before, they're, they're superheroes, you know. Uh, they don't get paid as much and they dip into their own pockets to make sure that kids coming from backgrounds like myself have a meal, have an extra book to read to be able to gain knowledge and things of that nature. So, you know, I just use my brain and use two and two together to be able to, you know, uh, formulate a plan to be able to give back to the city. Like I said, this city is special and I'm I'm blessed and privileged to be able to be a part of this organization. Uh, we've so far, we've helped 31 teachers and the goal before the season is over with is to help 91 teachers. So, um, you know, like that feels better than making a play on Sunday because at the end of the day, all of us, you know, even the, the, the faces of this, this, uh, this NFL, uh, this profession, we'll, we'll be done playing this game someday. And it's not about what you did on the field or how many accolades you have. It's about how many people you changed, how many people you touched, and uh, what kind of impact you made in the community because that's real life. Well, I certainly know that your impact on that has certainly uh, inspired Cody and I. We're going to try to help with the initiative as well, as long appreciate as well that. as other people who have also done the same thing. So I know Colts Nation greatly appreciates that. Going back to your personal accomplishments, do you have – I know we ask we ask this every time we get a player on here. Do you have any goals for yourself going into this season individually and as a team itself? Um, well, you know, usually I, I when I was a young guy, I had a, a different way of thinking of, you know, I need to get an accolade. I need to be a, a, a all pro pro bowler. But, you know, honestly, uh, individually, my goal is to uh, be the man of the community uh, in this state, you know, and. That's that's near and dear to my heart to be able to reach as many people as I can and, you know, uh, make change. And as a team, I just want us to be able to really go far. You know, we have all the tools, we have all the pieces and we just have to put all, all three phases together, offense, defense and special teams. And if we can do that, I feel like we have a great, great chance of being able to get to that Super Bowl. Awesome. Well, one last question for Yannick. I, we really appreciate you coming on and giving a little bit of your time, like I mentioned. Yes, sir. Uh, but my question for you here, um, it seems like the last few years, just for the Colts in, in this organization, pass rush has been something that this team has really tried to address in a lot of different ways, whether it be draft picks or bringing in free agents. You know, you already mentioned you know, some of the great pass rushers that came in the early 2000s with Frini and Mathis and some of those guys. Um, but and the Colts obviously made a big splash move to bring you into Indianapolis. Um, so this is kind of what I wanted to get your thoughts and kind of your message here to Colts Nation and what they can expect from you as a player um, and as a person and also just from this pass rush in general. Yeah, so, uh, you know, as a person, individually, you, you should uh, expect, you know, Colts Nation, a guy that's going to just be in the community. Any chance I, I get on my off days, Tuesdays, I want to be in the community. I want to be able to help. You know, kids back, you know, like, like for instance, the Corbin Safe Haven Place, kids coming from similar situations like that, uh, helping out these teachers that are the superheroes of our of our country. Uh, that's what I intend on doing. And, you know, individually, as well as like as a player, I just want to show you guys with like true leadership. You show you guys even through adversity that 91 is going to keep playing as hard as you can. And as a team, uh, I'm just so excited for you guys to see what, you know, is to come and the best is yet to come. Uh, it's a long, long season, and I just, you know, want you guys to bear with us because we will go to the playoffs and we will go to the Super Bowl. Love to hear that. Well, love it. Yeah, bold prediction. We love to hear that, man. We always love, you know, when we're thinking Super Bowl, you know, we always, obviously fans, we we love this team, we follow this team, and uh, we really appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule, Yannick, 
Um, and uh, yeah, man, best of luck this season. I know you guys have a preseason game this Saturday, and then you know only a couple weeks removed from the regular season. So best of luck to you. Best of luck to this organization, and and also best of luck in you and your efforts to assist teachers. Let us know if there's any way that we can help you out as Colts Nation as well. Appreciate you. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Cody. Uh, it was a pleasure being a part of this podcast. And go Colts. Yeah.